Neil deGrasse Tyson. Love him or hate him, I still like to listen in on the topics he's discussing. All right, so let's do so. Here's what all conspiracy theories have in common. There are people who are sure something is true that they want to be true. Every single one of them. I've yet to find an exception to this. They find evidence in support of what they want to be true. Or if there's evidence that points against it, they have to invoke a conspiracy to keep believing what they want and say the missing evidence was taken by the government so that they can continue to believe what they want. Well, people don't like to say, I don't know. I love to say, I don't know. Yeah. The universe brims with mysteries and all those UFO sightings. I don't know what they are. Let's investigate them. If I'm in an argument with somebody, I don't say, I don't know. I'm just like, oh yeah. And I try to bend it to, to win the argument. Why do you have to win every argument? What, what's wrong with you? I'm an ego based. <laughs> <Yeah. human. laughs> Here's what all conspiracy. I think that's what makes me different when it comes to conspiracy theories, right? I'm not trying to always say it's the government, but I'm letting you know it's a possibility. You know what I mean? I'm not always trying to say it's this. I'm just letting you know it's a possibility and don't rule it out. Ultimately, you have to formulate your own opinion. I think that's what this is all about. You hear the information, you take in the, the information and you deem whether it's true or false. And you know what I mean? You go from there. Some people do use that as just that. But I think for me, I sit down and I listen and I try to formulate that opinion to say, OK, what is, what is going on here? Could this be true? Could this be true? Not it's true. Could this be true? Is there things that line up to say this could be a possibility because things that have been done in the past? I think that's what I try to see. I can't speak for everybody else, only myself. You know what I mean? And when I see things that have been done in the past and I, I see things that, that kind of looks similar and you can kind of compare it to the past, then you can formulate those opinions and say, well, possibly because of what took place back then. If aliens crossed the galaxy in whatever is their spaceship and arrived at Earth just to throw some balloons across <laughs> North America, I'm thinking, really? Alien, really? We have crowdsourced any possible alien invasion on this earth because there's six billion smartphones in the world and everybody can yeah. take a high resolution still frame or video camera. We have a million people at any moment who are airborne. We can look out their windows. Yeah, I need better evidence than just we don't know what it is. Therefore, it's alien. Our capacity to detect alien life with the crowdsourcing of eyes on earth uh, tells me that is less convincing than ever before. Correct. If aliens cross the galaxy. Now, I partially agree with what he's saying here, because that is true. Why can't we get clear footage? But there's also reason to believe that they can also distort the images of things. You know what I mean? So when you do hold your camera up to try to view them, if, if we think they have technology that's far more advanced than anything that we have, What's stopping us from saying that they don't have something that can scramble a camera being faced at them? You, that's the thing. Like, if we're going to say, oh, they have aircraft that can divide, the, defy gravity and do all of these things that we're, we're hearing, then why can't they do that to a camera? That's what I'm asking. So I, I you could be right. That's why we don't have clear footage. But... It can also be true that they have some type of technology to not allow us to do so. What is the percent chance that aliens have already found out about Earth and who we are? I'm not authorized to come. You are authorized. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. So uh, aliens may be vastly more intelligent than we are because they figured out how to get here. Correct. And we haven't left low Earth orbit in 50 years. So the question is, why would we think they would be interested in us at all? I remain unconvinced that we've been visited by aliens. We have high resolution images of the surface of Mars. We have images from the edge of the universe. Oh, and by the way, the panorama on Mars was taken by an SUV sized <laughs> rover. <laughs> 
Look yeah. down. Let them okay. know. We have this high resolution imagery of all these places in the universe, and the best you have is a fuzzy monochromatic tic tac. And you want to say those are visiting aliens? If that's the best you have, we have more work to do here. Do you have an opinion that there's some technologies are being kept from us just because, as a human race, we're not ready for them yet? People think, especially the government, has all these secret things and their secret capabilities. Have you ever worked for the government? <laughs> <laughs> I try not. The to. level of incompetence. <laughs> And the inability of anything to remain a secret that has any tasty elements to it at all is near zero. I think about that with the moon landing. A lot of people are like, okay, so what about JFK? Done. Right there. Done. Done. And everything you just said, what about JFK? Then why haven't we got the information about that yet? Why is it still classified? Why haven't everything been released? So don't sit there and say that. I get it. Neil speaks from a scientific standpoint, right? Where they need all of the facts and everything like that. I get that. But to sit here and say that things can't be kept a secret, we've been shown already that things have before. Like, don't do that, bro. Like, that makes me think sometimes when he says stuff like that, that he's being sort of puppeted to kind of steer us off track. That's what it makes me think sometimes. Like some of the statements you make, I'd be like, man, no, no, no. We've seen it time and time again before. Just because you can't explain it doesn't mean they're visiting space aliens. Okay? Just let's be clear about this. Okay? Just because a European person will not accept or believe that Africans can build pyramids in an amazing civilization doesn't mean aliens help them. And I'm a big fan of the film Stargate. Yeah. But those are aliens that built it. I love the film, but the at film the end too. of the day, yeah. it's, you know, it's people in denial of something that's in front of them. So I, and they want to credit aliens. So I just need better evidence. That's all. Just because that's what I'd be saying about him from a scientific standpoint. That's where he bases all his stuff from. He likes more evidence. Well, the evidence says that a lot of the ancient civilizations, even in like certain wall art that you have to question as to whether or not they they interacted or came in contact with aliens. You can see it in a lot of the wall art that we've discovered. So you're going to rule that out? You're going to rule that out as a possibility? Nobody said it was true that we have concrete ed ed uh, evidence we would have to figure out some type of time machine to go back in time and speak to them in order to have concrete evidence. But just like everything else, we're gathering up and we're formulating opinions. I, I don't know, man. Some stances he takes, those hard nose stances that he takes, I'm just like, man, like, how, how do you just completely say, no, that's just not the case. I just can't rule it out. That's just like with anything. You just can't rule out every possibility. I'm one of those who's on but TV. I'm one of those who's a little worried when we give our return address broadcast out into space because you don't give your email to strangers in the street. Yet we're giving the coordinates of Earth broadcast out to the gaps of interstellar space. So I'm a little worried about that. But then I think about it and I say nearly every portrayal of an alien in Hollywood is evil. Going right on back to War of the Worlds with H.G. Wells. And I'm thinking, why? Do we have any insights that aliens would be evil? Or is it really a mirror to ourselves? It's not imagined knowledge of how aliens would behave. It's actual knowledge of how we have behaved. Because an alien coming to Earth has a greater technology than we do. So how has it gone on Earth any time one civilization with higher technology encounters one with lesser technology? It has never boded well for the society with lesser technology. True. They've been enslaved, killed. So I think we fear aliens because, in fact, we fear ourselves. We fear what we would do if we had the capability to go to another planet I like think that, they do to us. I think we do that un, yeah. unwittingly. Yeah. That's what's manifesting in our storytelling. I think it represents what we see out of human beings. Sure. Yeah. Definitely. I'm one of those who's a little... I agree. We do got to take a hard, hard look in the mirror at ourselves. I mean, just turn the news on and you should be disgusted. Disgusted. Like, I, I don't think I've had to sit down with my kids more to discuss 
some of the hate that they see on social media or on the news amongst ourselves, ourselves. And if you don't, you don't watch yourself, you'll get sucked into all that. And you'll start becoming it and be of it. And you'll look around and you're like, how did I get here? So, yeah, we have to take a hard look at ourselves, man. And that could be very well true, what he's saying. I think he has a great point there with what he's saying. It's ourselves we could be scared of. And I've always thought about that. What if we do go to another planet, right? And the, the inhabitants of that planet, we deem lesser as far as technology wise, capability wise and everything like that. What will happen? What will happen? I bet nine out of 10 people that heard me just ask that question. What would happen? will have something negative to say. One person would be like, Oh, we'll probably go there and teach and show them. And no, no, I don't think so. And that scares me. Tonight, a 4.5 billion year old cosmic rock about to land back on Earth. This spacecraft, as you see there, is carrying a sample of rocks and dust from an asteroid named Bennu. And it's entering Earth's atmosphere at a velocity of 36 times the speed of sound. The sample is going to land in this desolate section of the Utah desert. That's important because Bennu uh, overall is an asteroid the size of the Empire State Building. It has a real chance of smashing into Earth in 159 years. If that actually happens, it would hit Earth with the force of 22 atomic bombs. So NASA is hoping that this sample that they've obtained could help them figure out a way to prevent an impact and learn a lot more, uh, obviously, about asteroids. Out front now, as What's this about? Tonight, a 4.5 billion year old cosmic rock about to land back on Earth. This spacecraft, as you see there, is carrying a sample of rocks and dust from an asteroid named Bennu. And it's entering Earth's atmosphere at a velocity of 36 times the speed of sound. The sample is going to land in this desolate section of the Utah desert. That's important because Bennu uh, overall is an asteroid the size of the Empire State Building. It has a real chance of smashing into Earth in 159 years. If that actually happens, it would hit Earth with the force of 22 atomic bombs. Ooh. So NASA is hoping that this sample that they've obtained could help them figure out a way to prevent an impact and learn a lot more, uh, obviously, about asteroids. Up front now, astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson he is the head of the Hayden Planetarium, the host of Star Talk, and he just wrote his latest book, To Infinity and Beyond, A Journey of Cosmic Discovery. So, Neil, I, obviously, I relish all of our conversations. Um, so you've got this asteroid, and, uh, you know, it's incredible, all the math of it. We get on there. You get a little piece of rock all by a robot, and they brought it home. So what can a scientist actually learn from this 4.5 billion year old rock that's about to land in Utah? Well, what we don't know for sure, when you think we would, but we just don't, is what's the structural integrity of asteroids? Only recently, in recent decades, did we learn some of them might just be rubble piles gathered together that are masquerading as a solid object. Others are sort of loosely held together. This matters. Because if you want to deflect an asteroid, I don't know what it's made of. Way, and you nudge one part of it, and it's, it doesn't have the structural integrity to stay together, you can end up breaking off a piece, and, and your mission would then fail. So by looking at what the material contents of Bennu is through this sample return, which, by the way, we just have to just just praise that this is working, okay? Just, right. I mean, just, look, I, I got to say, we, we launched... Osiris Rex, this mission, seven years ago, from a moving platform, Earth, intersected a moving target, Bennu, an asteroid. It did a touch and go, grabbed material, came back to Earth, <laughs> deployed that, that capsule, and it keeps going, is going to visit more asteroids. And then people are saying, oh, I don't trust science. I mean, science this. It's like, do you know what we do? Do you have any idea? <laughs> I mean, it is pretty incredible. And then there's also the, oh, my gosh, we can do that. And, and, and what a mess we make of so many uh, much more simple things here at home, right? Um, yes. Uh, okay, so if Bennu does... And I know most people are like, ah, oh, that's 150 years away. You know what I mean? I'll be fine. I'll be good. Okay. Okay. 
You know what I mean? I feel like a lot of these scientists are already working on how to make us live longer anyway. <laughs> what if we get the, I don't know, you get up a few more years and they discover the fountain of youth and now people are living two, three hundred years old. Then what you're going to say? Like, like, I think they're already working on that. It just That's just my speculation. I don't know that for a fact, but I feel like that. So don't always say, oh, that's 150 years away. I ain't got nothing to worry about. Has hit Earth, and, and I know that we, you know, obviously we can talk about odds, but if it were to, you talk about something 22 times, is that what I said? 22 times, uh, 22 times uh, the size of, or 22 atomic bombs. Let me make sure I say it exactly correctly. What would something like that do to Earth? Whew. Well, it's not an extinction level uh, a hit. Well, if it hits a city, that's really bad. But we would have some good idea of that well in advance, right? By the way, as we get closer to 2182, these odds will improve, improve in the sense that it'll either go to zero or go to certainty. It's not going to still dangle in, uh, is it or is it not? And so, so that's an important first point. So if we know that it's going to hit, then we got to know where it's going to hit. If it hits a city, it takes out the city completely. But most of Earth is not city, so, and most of land is not occupied. So my fear is that if it hits the ocean, then you got a tsunami that could take out an entire coastline, right? Wow. But otherwise, it, it would destroy a county's worth of land. That's about it. Could you imagine? <laughs> and I shouldn't, shouldn't seem hyped about that. I don't know why, but this stuff intrigues me. You know what I mean? But could you imagine... That thing impacting 22 atomic bombs, hitting the ocean. What type of tsunami, bro? And then could you imagine an evacuation call for an entire coastline to push inward? Oh, my. I don't even, I don't even know how that even goes. Can you imagine, because most people do what? They always do what? When evacuation goes out, they wait till the last minute, and then there's this long traffic line of people trying to get out. Can you imagine the traffic line trying to move an entire coastline inward? And then where are you going to go? So, um, you know, I hope everyone will get your new book. You talk about parallel words, worlds, black holes, wormholes, time travel, all these questions people have. One thing um, that a lot of people are talking about lately, and NASA even now has a head of, U of UFOs, right? Congress has a hearing uh, on, on UFOs. And so people are talking about UFOs and aliens in, in a more serious way than, than, you know, being on the front of the National Enquirer, the way it used to be. Um, so a Mexican journalist displayed bodies of two supposed non-human beings uh, in the in Mexico in front of the Congress in Mexico. Okay, um, each with three fingered hands and elongated heads. Now, uh, before we all mock uh, the video, right? Because <laughs> it's gotten a lot of mocking. It looks a lot like ET. But as I said, NASA just announced for the first time a director of research on UFOs. So they are taking uh, this overall topic more seriously. What's your take on this? Well, first of all, I like what they did in Mexico. They, they had what they claimed are alien bodies, and they brought it out in front of their Congress. That's better than leaving them in a locked box and saying you and no one else can get to see them. So that's a start. But in science, a, 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 a new truth, an objective truth, is only established when multiple labs can analyze whatever your claim is. When we brought rocks back from the moon, we distributed them to all the labs of the world. So everybody participated in that discovery. So here, bring out samples to others and let other people, skeptical people, in other labs test and this. So either verify it or falsify it, and then we move on. What was your reaction when you... I mean, notice nobody hasn't said anything about that lately, right? Haven't heard any updates, any samples, any... Um, I don't know. I think I saw a few people in the comment section say that it came out that they were not real or something like that. You know what I mean? But you don't know if they're telling the truth or not and they're just trying to debunk it. But haven't heard too much on it. Like, this should still be a huge story, I would think. The evidence put forth for visiting aliens from outer space wouldn't count as scientific evidence. It's like eyewitness testimony. That's that's the lowest form of evidence in the court of science. Well, we got some videos and some Air Force pilots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I so I joke Brady about this. Yeah, yeah. No, so I joke about this and I say maybe the aliens are actually fuzzy. <laughs> okay, or they have a special affinity to 
the U.S. Navy restricted airspace. Mm. I mean, so the point is, lights in the sky that you can't explain, fine. That doesn't mean they're extraterrestrial aliens visiting from outer space. Just because you don't know what it is, doesn't mean you know what it is. But you're telling me the universe is brimming with life, and they it might be brimming me, in life. But if you see life out there, don't believe it. You haven't shown me life. So, so wait, wait. Everybody's got it. Everyone in this room has a smartphone that can take high resolution okay, pic pictures yeah. and videos. Okay. And a million people at any given moment are airborne with a window looking out the, the thing. Okay. But nobody has images of aliens. The evidence put forth for a visit. He really standing on that right there. He's standing on that whole theory and claim that he speaks of about video images and stuff like that and pictures being taken. I, I, I don't know. When he laughs about it, though, it kind of irks me because now you're saying all these highly decorated pilots that came forward, that are continuing to come forward, these whistleblowers, you're laughing at what they're saying? Because they showed a, a blurry video of a Tic Tac image flying through the sky at high speeds. Come on now. You, you can't do that, man. Could some of them be telling? Could some of them be, be lying? That's a possibility. But, but I'm just not naive to say all of them are just going to sit here and band together and lie and risk their careers and their families' lives and well-beings and jeopardize everything over that, over going viral for a moment. I just can't, it's, it's hard for me to believe that. The smartest chimp does what our toddlers can do. And there's no way you will explain to a chimp, I'll have dinner ready at 6.30, can you pick up some, some juice on the way home? That the simplest human thoughts are inconceivable to a chimp. And their talents are about what our toddlers can do. So let's get back to this 1% smarter alien that we've discovered. What would we look like to them? Well, they would roll Stephen Hawking forward after combing the human species, and they'd say, this one is slightly smarter than the rest because he can do astrophysics calculations in his head like little Timmy over here, who, who, who just came home from preschool. Wait, did he just say roll Stephen Hawking forward? Did he just say Wow. Wow. Now, to his claim about a chimpanzee and a top, I think that's interesting. I think that's very, very interesting that, that he compares that because anything ever told to us before or shown to us are the highly intelligence of chimps and stuff like that, right? It's always been made the same, but they never put it in a category like that. It would just always display, display their intelligence, their, their problem solving, them being in a laboratory and performing certain tasks and showing their, their intelligence. I, so I always looked at it as these jokers are smart, just as smart as us. But when you think back, they never said in comparisons to humans, how smart they were. So to see him say it goes down to a, a child, a kid, I'm like, so all these years I was thinking, <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure y'all feeling the same way. This All these years y'all were thinking, you know, these things are super smart. They done made these movies, different things that kind of even enhanced that belief. For him to say that and then put, turn around and put it in comparison to aliens, I'm like, Wow, bro. Wow. We got to be careful with what we believe and what we're seeing and what they're feeding to us, fam. If something like easy, if we're e I'm that easy to manipulate when it comes to a chimpanzee, imagine what other manipulations has taken place. That's what I was getting at the whole time. Everybody finds aliens interesting, okay? Uh, who am I to know what would or wouldn't interest an alien? What I would say is, what kind of an ego must you have to think that a more advanced species, vastly more advanced than we are, as it would have to be if it traveled here, we haven't left low Earth orbit in 50 years, what kind of an ego does it require to believe that aliens would cross the galaxy just to observe us 
in a very shy way. Or let's, when we visit Earth, let's only go to the restricted airspace where the Navy flies, and then, and let's make ourselves fuzzy. You know what terrifies me most? Is not whether Bigfoot exists. It's whether Bigfoot is actually fuzzy. <laughs> I don't know, actually out of focus. <laughs> so you get this landscape and out of focus Bigfoot comes towards you. That would be terrifying. Mm. Completely terrifying. Out of focus. Everybody finds aliens interesting. Okay. Uh, who am I? So the whole theory of us being placed here by them to be workers for them, we're shooting that down. Um, I think it would be interesting if also they did travel here to study, to see, you know what I mean? What it is that this earth has to offer them. And while they're here studying us or what this earth has, as far as whatever mineral or whatever gold or whatever thing that this earth has to offer, they study it and they're just waiting. Maybe we haven't found it yet. Maybe we're getting to that point. All this advanced technology, everything we're discovering, everything we're doing. What if we use that and we discover that this earth is rich in this specific mineral or gold or whatever it is, and we find it? Then I think we could possibly see them then. That's my thought. That may be when they show up and make themselves known. Or they're already here and they make themselves known. Listen, man, y'all get at me in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Shout out to Neil deGrasse. Like I said, I always enjoy checking out his videos because it makes you think. He's very intelligent. He makes you think. He he uh, uh, sparks different type of controversial emotions inside of you to make you go back at him. And that's the joy of it to me. That's the beauty in it. But uh, y'all let me know what you thought. Stick around and stay tuned. Until next one, I'm gone. Peace.